Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Hot Up the Mess. I'm your host, Samantha Bush, and it feels so good to be back. You guys, do you ever sit and think about something like in pop culture that like it's so random, but like you can't stop thinking about it and it plays over and over in your head? Well, mine is that so if you're an America's Next Top Model girly, I mean, I was like a major America's Next Top Model girl. Like that's all I wanted to talk about. I'll never forget. I made like a friend in seventh grade. Her name was Allie. And we sat next to each other in science class and we talked about America's Next Top Model. And I was like, oh, we're destined to be best friends. We didn't end up becoming best friends, but we were like class friends, you know? Anyway, so I'm just thinking about this. Do you guys remember? I think it was like cycle three or four. It was Eva's season. There was a woman named Amanda and she was the one that was like going to go blind. Well, I'll never forget that she shared with the world that her son was conceived to the minute on 9-11. And I just I think about it all the time. And like there's this clip that she <laughs> that they have online where she's like explaining this and you hear her like talking to him. And then she's like, his name is Elijah. My jawoof. And it's just, it's so funny to me. I, I, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's all I can think about. I had to get it off my chest. Like I couldn't not talk about it because it's just, I'm, I can't stop here. Elijah is my light, my jaw wolf. <laughs> Mom, I love Eli. He is the most magical child I have ever seen in my entire life. He was conceived to the hour on September 11th. <laughs> okay. Just had to share that. Thank you for coming along with me on that journey. My jaw wolf. What does that mean exactly? What is Jawulf? Oh, okay. This is, I'm not looking for the Bangladeshi American music producer. Okay. I just have, just for my own mental, like, I just had to know. Okay. It's about kindred spirits, two people coming together because of a shared interest. Okay. So like her son. Okay. I get it. But I just had to share that, like, I really haven't, I've been saying it all day. Like I've been walking around my house going, Shawoof. like I look at Ruby and like I say it, like I cannot stop. And also I have to tell you the amount of DMs I got last week about me saying Moo Moo instead of Mew Mew have been sending me to the fucking moon. Like I am obsessed with all of you. It was so funny. Like one girl, she just simply just DM me and she just goes Moo Moo. And at first I was like, Huh? And then I remembered. I was like, oh, that's referencing my clown ass. That's great. So, okay. Why we're here. We're here to discuss what the fuck's been going on. Celeb news, Bravo news, exciting updates, not so exciting updates. Um, you know, it's it's been a rough week. I know it's only Tuesday, but it's been a rough week with the Kyle and Mauricio of it all, you guys. Yeah, we're going to get into it. But first, I do want to just update everybody. Vanderpump Rules starting filming tomorrow. How fucking exciting. I can't wait. Um, Lala Kent said that they are starting to film and it's giving her anxiety. So she goes, they sent us like what our schedule may look like. It's subject to change. And I'm just like, oh, we're like really in it again. We usually have so much time to just kind of process things change a lot, but it's like, nope. Profound, profound words by Lauren Lala from Utah Kent. Um, and I also don't know if Raquel is filming it says, as of now, it's not known if Levis or Sandoval will be coming back to the show. Maddox and co-star Katie Maloney are getting ready to open up their sandwich shop called Something About Her in the coming weeks with cameras undoubtedly showcasing their launch. This is from Deadline. Um, I have to be honest. I have to speak my truth. Something about her, the inside looks terrible. I, It's so cluttered. It's so... There's so many chairs. There's so many pillows. There's so many 
like things you have to get around. There's so much seating and it's such a small space. And I'm thinking like, you guys are going to be having so many people come and line up. There's no room for them. There's a tiny little counter. There's a tiny little back door with a curtain separating it. I mean, like, I love the color scheme. I love it. It's very Nancy Myers English garden type of vibe. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this isn't making any sense to me. And you guys already know how I feel about the name. You guys already know. Um, what is this? Oh, this is interesting. Maybe this, maybe something about her is a play on a book. Do we know this? So I just did a Google of something about her because I just wanted to look at the inside while I was talking about it. And then it comes up that there's a book. It's called The Opposites Attract series, book number four. And it's called Something About Her. And the girl on the cover is eating a sandwich. Interesting. The author is Rachel Higginson. And it says, like, here's like the synopsis. I quit my life or at least my new job. My new fancy head chef position at one of the most acclaimed restaurants in the city is not turning out like I hope. I'm a mess. Interesting. Maybe that's why they named it that. Did we know this? Am I okay? I really didn't know this. This book came out in 2019. Are they a big fan of Rachel Higginson? Does Rachel Higginson know that they're naming their restaurant after her book? Because that's like not a coincidence to name something something about her and the girls eating a sandwich. It's about a restaurant. Interesting. I feel like I never knew this. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm... I'm just trying to understand because I just don't understand the name. Like, and I haven't, I think Gracie was the one that came up or, or mentioned on the podcast um, that she wishes it was called better halves. And I completely agree. And they did make that t-shirt better have. I do. God, I wish that they would get a better um, graphic designer because it's not ideal. Um, what I'm seeing is not something I'd ever really like to see. Okay. This is also something about her is also a movie that came out in, 2021. Okay. Okay. I don't think that that's what they named it after. I really do think they named it after the book because that seems very odd. Wow. Okay. The more you know, the more you know, and the more you learn on this podcast, you guys are going to be so educated. Thanks to me. Okay. So Raquel is said to TBD coming back. I think she's probably going to come back like halfway through the season. Um, Sandoval, I can't imagine he's not coming back. I did get word from a follower. They DM me that all of his shows have been like postponed or canceled indefinitely on it, on his like tour that he's on. So that I, to me, that just means that he's filming. Um, and then they're saying Charlie might not come back, which I don't love that Charlie might not come back. I enjoy her. I thought she is a great addition to the show. Like I find her kind of to have like Greek chorus energy kind of early season on Carol Radzewill, if you will. And so I'm kind of bummed. I hope she comes back, maybe not in like a full, um, full time role, but maybe as a friend, I would, I would like to see that as Monique says, I would like to see that. Uh, speaking of Monique, Monique Samuels and Chris Samuels divorced. I can't believe it. I mean, I can, but I can't. Did we discuss this? Guys, I'm not sure. All I know is the last time I saw Chris Samuels, he posted on Instagram or maybe Monique posted it on her stories. Um, He lost like a ton of weight. Like he, and he simply was just like, I have been eating healthier and working out and I've lost a ton of weight. I mean, he looks really good because we all remember we all remember that scene where she was folding his laundry and his his drawers were large and in charge. They were, it looked like a bed. It looked like a duvet cover, to be honest. And I'm not fat shaming. Chris Hamill is just a very large person. Like he's a football player. He's huge. He's huge. He's a massive person. So People Magazine reported last week 
that Monique and Chris Samuels had split after 10 years of marriage. The Montgomery County Family Court confirmed to People on Tuesday that Monique has officially filed for a divorce from the NFL player. Though Monique has filed a petition to seal the documents, the docket shows that she filed a complaint for absolute divorce on April 14th, and she filed an amended complaint for an absolute divorce on June 15th. Um, So it has yet to be finalized, but it does seem that it's going to happen. I know that his mother is probably thrilled. Um, And it says here that they haven't appeared on each other's respective Instagram grids since December 2022. Um, They also didn't post anything to commemorate their 11th wedding anniversary on March 3rd, as well as Mother or Father's Day. Additionally, Chris has unfollowed Monique and her company for not not for lazy moms. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. So I remember a little while ago, maybe a few months ago, people put out um, an article saying like Monique and Chris are having issues. And because Ashley Darby was like alluding to this at BravoCon and she kind of was like, yeah, Monique is really struggling right now. And it was like very, hmm, it was very uncertain what she meant, but it was like, we all were kind of reading in between the lines and, uh, Then Monique and Chris kind of fired back at People Magazine and said, you know, they posted a YouTube video. So she says, it's no secret that Chris and I have been struggling in some areas of our marriage. And anybody who watched Love and Marriage DC last year, y'all saw the arguments. Y'all saw everything that was going on. It was a lot of confusion. It was crazy building up to that 10-year marker of our marriage. And when you've been married that long and you've had things that you're like, listen, this is unmet or I've been unheard. You start to get frustrated and it's like, oh my God, is this what life is going to be? I can't take it anymore. So what y'all saw on Love and Marriage DC last season, it was my cry for help. Well, apparently her needs continued to be unmet um, and she continued to be unheard because she filed for divorce. You know, we hate to see a marriage end, even if it's Monique. Monique, a fa- you know, I'm famously not a Monique stan. I used to love her and then she um, physically assaulted Candace Dillard on camera and chased her around a barn. And that was really manic and scary. And I didn't enjoy that one bit. So speaking of marriage, we have a lot of marriage and relationship news today. Updates, everything. So last week, Kyle had posted for Father's Day. And that got me going. I was like, something is afoot. Something is afoot. Because it was very cold, the the Instagram post. It wasn't like warm and fuzzy. Like Kyle, literally, her and Mauricio were disgustingly um, like affectionate, you know? Especially on social media. Like they would take selfies together. They'd be like kissing and licking each other. I don't know. I mean, it's not Krabba style, but it's like, you know, like we got it. Like you're in love. So that's what kind of got my, you know, antennas up. And I had posted about it and everyone was like, oh my God. And then I was like, no, like something's going on with her and this Morgan Wade person because Morgan Wade is getting like a lot of attention on her Instagram. And Morgan Wade is a country singer and um, has a lot of tattoos, is sober, works out a lot. Who else is doing that right now? Kyle Richard. She's sober. She's working out a lot. She's, you know, fighting the Ozempic rumors. She's literally fighting for her life. Uh, I personally don't think she's on Ozempic. Um, I think she's just like, not drinking and I probably just like eating really healthy and like working out because her body is like sick right now. Like she looks like rock hard. She looks like a brick wall. So I was posting about this and everybody was like, this is interesting. This is weird. Then I made a podcast about it last week and people were saying like, wow, you know, Nancy Grace on the case. That's me. Then something even weirder has happened since. So over the weekend, Kim Richard's daughter Whitley got married in the woods and she made people sit on blankets and that is a conversation for another time if i show up to someone's woodland wedding and they have blankets for me i'm pissed it i think it's so rude like it's not thinking of your guests at all it's not thinking of your guest experience and from working on Betch's Brides, like that is the number one thing that you should care about is your guest experience. Um, I know some people are going to yell at me about that and be like, it's my wedding. I can do whatever I want. It's like, yeah, but like, don't you want your friends and family to like be comfortable and like not throw out their back while you're like kissing each other and like giving, you know, reciting vows? No? Question mark? 
anyway, so Whitley was getting married in the woods. And I was really excited because I was like, okay, Kyle and Mauricio are together. And Morgan Wade is like on tour. She's like singing at some carnival or festival, something. And guys, they posted no pictures together. None. Not a selfie. Nothing. That was weird. Because normally at like weddings, that's when you really start thinking like, oh, you know, you start thinking about love. You start thinking about romance. You start thinking about, you know, maybe your marriage, um, things like that. Apparently not. And then it's his birthday. And Kyle posts for his birthday. Oh, my God. Barb is on the ground. Hang on. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. Forgive me. She posts a picture of him on a bike and it says, happy birthday at Mauricio at Mumansky 18 exclamation. Then she posts only good vibes at Mumansky 18. And it's just a photo of him drinking wine. That's it. That's all we got. It was literally like happy birthday at Mumansky. Only good vibes. Only good vibes. Only good vibes. If someone I loved deeply posted that for my birthday, I would call them and be like, are you mad at me? Only good vibes. Not even a heart emoji. Not even a champagne pop. Nothing. It's weird, but that's not all, guys. Mumansky18, Mauricio, he reposted all of the stories that he was tagged in wishing him happy birthday, except Kyle's. Yeah. Sit with that. Think about it. Let me know what you think. I think it's weird. I, I, I'm on the case. Like, I'm... <sighs> guys, I'm trying. I'm really trying. And then someone brought to my attention. I'm so sorry. I forget your name. I forget your handle. I will go back in my DMs and try to find it um, at a different, you know, when I'm done recording. But they had found the Morgan Wade origin story on Instagram. Yeah. See, like back in May, May 9th of 2022, she just goes appreciation post, heart, heart, heart. And it's pictures of her and Mauricio hugging and kissing. You guys, I'm devastated. This was my mom and dad. This was like my loves. There's another photo, stagecoach with my other half, heart emoji. And it's her and Mauricio walking into the sunset at stagecoach on April 30th, 2022. I'm going to be sick. Like they were just somewhat, they were like a couple I never thought I'd have to like worry about. Like the cheating rumors, everything like that. I was always like, no, never. Like not Mauricio and Kyle. If he was cheating, it would have come out by now. Like that was my kind of like mentality. Um, So I'm just like, what the fuck? Then on February 17th, 2022, it's a photo of Teddy, Kyle, this Morgan Wade person, um, this woman, Jenny and Alexia, Kyle's daughter, all at lunch together, it seems. And Kyle, this is her caption. I stalked Morgan Wade music on Instagram after listening to her music while driving solo from Utah to Colorado while making hashtag housewives of the North pole. And today we met up in person for the first time, the most unlikely of friendships. Some may think, but kinship knows no boundaries heart. So I don't think anything was happening at this point, because her and her and Mauricio were still posting lovey dovey, you know, soulmate appreciation posts, family appreciation posts. There's a photo of him like bending her over backwards. He's looking into her vagina. Um, that's me. That's May of 2022. Like uh, shit goes off the rails, like at towards the end. I'm going to say fall. Cause that's when things stop. The last post of them two just together, like being a couple. Um, let's see was July 3rd of 2022. And it was them, um, at some resort together. It was like an ad for, for that. Um, 
But other than that, like, guys, they haven't posted just them in a long time. I'm stressed. I'm so stressed about this. And like, I, I don't, I just want everyone to be happy. And like, I just, I don't know. Something is up. Something is just not right. There's a lot of Morgan Wade posts. Like I'm looking at one from February 18th. They're at Universal together. Carl, Kyle's wearing combat boots and a leather jacket with Morgan. And they're posing with a troll. Like an actual troll. Like from the troll movie. I don't know. Guys, I'm nervous. They're posted again together April 26th. Last night, I hosted a night of music in honor of my late best friend, Lorraine Shea. It was an emotional night made easier being surrounded by Lorraine's family, friends, and loved ones as special as mine. Having us all together made for a very special night while raising awareness and money, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Morgan Wade, for performing and making the night even more special. Oh, God. I'm so stressed. And then, like, for the wedding... He wasn't in any of the pics. He wasn't in any of the pics. You guys, what's going on? Pre-wedding celebration with my sisters and our offspring. Singing karaoke. God, Kyle's always got the fucking mic. She's always got a hat on and she's always got a mic. I don't know. Something is up. We, I, we'll see. Um, I... I <laughs> It's just one of those things where it's like I've defended this couple since the beginning. Like these, this couple to me, like I know people were blindsided by Ariana and Tom. Okay. Let's just say, let's bring that. Let's compare. Everyone was blindsided by Ariana and Tom, I, myself included. I was gobsmacked. I couldn't believe what I fucking saw. When I saw the TMZ had TMZ, TMZ headline. Sorry, I'm like getting ahead of myself. I'm getting hot. When I saw the TMZ headline that was like Raquel Levis affair, Tom Sandoval, I was like, what the fuck is going on? But this, you guys, this is going to be heartbreaking for me when this all comes out because something is up. I just feel it. My witch-like intuition, it's, it's alarm bells ringing. <sighs> it's upsetting. But you guys know I'm on the case. If you guys see something, say something to me. <laughs> um, you know, and it's funny because I posted about it on Twitter a few days ago, and I was like, something's something's weird going on. And you know, of course, you get like the few people like, can't women just be friends with other women? And it's like, that's naive. Like, of course, women can be friends with women, but this doesn't feel like a friendship. This feels they feel like lovers. I'm going to say it. They feel like lovers. Now, of course, this is all alleged. This is just speculation. This is all just something I'm just, you know, seeing on Instagram and I'm reporting it as I see it. Um, but you guys know me. Like, I'm not someone that like, I was going to say I don't sensationalize things, but I do exaggerate quite a bit. I am relatively dramatic. You know, I did watch Titanic with Gracie um, and Danny via long distance. You know, me and her are long distance best friends. And we watched Titanic together and she just simply texted me and she goes, you are Rose just always, you know, whoo. And I was like, that's who I am. You know, that's who I am. But I do want to talk about something that's really dark. Kim Zolciak and the 911 call. So it was reported Kim Zolciak called 911 on a estranged husband, Croy Bierman, and claimed he threatened kidnapping charges. So this is the Daily News reporting this. Um, on Monday, TMZ released an audio from nine one from a 911 call Kim Zolciak placed in Alpharetta, Georgia on June 16th. And this is what she says. I just have a situation here where my husband is threatening a kidnapping because my girlfriend took my son on a play date and now he has harassed not only the mother, but my son is shaking and hysterically crying. And now I'm just going to leave and go pick him up to prevent the situation. I don't know what else to do at this point. She went on. My husband, we're going through a divorce, just came in and said that he's going to file kidnapping charges on her. And I said, absolutely not. I, I agreed she could take him. Kim Zolciak said she called her lawyer who told her it's not kidnapping if one parent gives consent, which like obviously. My husband did steal my bag um, that has all my divorce paperwork and all my stuff in it. This is just so petty. Oh, she then told the operator, I don't feel like this is going to be the end of it, to be honest with you tonight. That is 
haunting. Oof. So according to police report details, Us Weekly published on Monday, five phone calls from the estranged couple's residence came into the local police department between 624 and 628 p.m. Eastern on June 20, June 16th. In the final call, the caller said she doesn't need police at this time and will call back. So, guys, this is this is going to get ugly. I mean, it already is like it already is ugly, but it's just going to get worse. And so, I mean, if you guys don't remember, but in May, TMZ reported that the couple um, was divorcing and they owe the IRS a total of $1.1 million in unpaid taxes, interest penalties for the last three years. In the weeks since their split, um, Kim Zolciak reportedly asked a judge to force her husband to be tested for drugs. Okay. I don't, I don't like the situation. I don't like what's going on. As someone who comes from a divorced parents, like it just breaks my heart to see people like these two adults, like making their children's lives like a living fucking hell because they hate the other spouse. Like that sucks. I'm glad my, I was very lucky. My parents never were like that. They kept everything like away from me. If they had any issues, I never knew about it and never will. Um, but now they like hang out and they're cool together. So I don't, I don't understand. It also says Beerman report, excuse me. It says Beerman reportedly filed legal documents alleging his wife has an online gambling problem. Okay. I honestly believe that because Kim like notoriously bought like a crazy amount of lottery tickets at one time on her show. It was like $250,000 of lottery tickets. Uh, interesting. I've never bought a lottery ticket. Like I don't understand them. I remember Danny got some scratch offs like in like one of his for like a birthday gift from one of his aunts last year. Like she got him other stuff, but she got him lottery like scratch offs and none of us knew how to fucking do it. <laughs> it was the dumbest thing ever. We were like, maybe they make it hard to understand so that like people don't like think they, you know, one, they get to keep all the money. It was so stupid. It was so stupid. I also want to talk about something that when the news came out, I didn't talk about it um, for some reason. So I'm so sorry about this, but you guys, Jesse James Decker, one of my Nash villains, her brother-in-law, Anthony Bass, apologizes for sharing post encouraging anti-LGBTQ plus boycotts and says baseball is for everybody. So yet again, this family won't fucking stop being the worst homophobic fucks. Sick. I believe he also got dropped by his team. He had posted some anti-LGBTQ comments um, and he was dropped from the team. So the Toronto Blue Jays have designated pitcher Anthony Bass for assignment following an anti-LGBTQ post the 35-year-old shared on social media last month. The move comes hours before the Blue Jays' first game of Pride Weekend when the team faces the Minnesota Twins. Bass was expected to take part in the festivities, including catching the memorial the ceremonial first pitch on Friday. Blue Jays general manager Ross Atkins said Friday that Bass's performance on the field was primarily a baseball decision. Performance was a large part, was a large aspect of the decision. Distraction was a small part of it and something we had to factor in. I'm saying we're trying to build the best possible team we can build, and this was a baseball decision to make our team better. Uh, we definitely don't want any. And then Atkins added the team values the LGBTQ community and expressed regret for any mishandling of the situation. We definitely don't want anyone to feel hurt, Atkins said. We're focused on the environment. We care about this community. We care about our fans. And I deeply regret if people feel if people do feel that way, it certainly was not our intention. So what had happened was in May, he had shared a post that called for anti anti LGBTQ boycotts of Target. Get a fucking life. Sorry. I'm like Tourette's Target and Bud Light over their support of the LGBTQ to, oh my God, I like can't speak. I'm getting like so heated, you guys. LGBTQ community and referred to the support as evil and demonic. Okay. So obviously he apologized while speaking to reporters, but has been booed by the fans at Rogers Center since. On Thursday, Bass expanded on his original apology, saying he was sorry for any harm or hurt that he made. However, there's always, with these fuckers, there's always a however. There's always a however, a but, a furthermore. Like, they never just shut the fuck up. And so he goes, I stand by my personal beliefs. 
the video he goes this is what he said he's so stupid this whole family sucks the video itself obviously i took it down i just felt like it was too much of a distraction right but i stand by my personal beliefs and everyone's entitled to their personal beliefs right but i also i mean no harm towards any group of people i felt like taking that down the second time was the right thing to do and not being a distraction as our team, our job is to win baseball games. And that's my focus. Obviously, it wasn't your fucking focus. Your focus was on spewing hate and lies and propaganda. And it's disgusting, especially what's going on in this country with all the LGBTQ um, leg- anti-trans legislation that's going on. It's just absolutely vile. And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the Nash villains. I know everybody is begging me to do a podcast on the Nash villains, and maybe I will. Maybe I will because I I I can't stand these people, the Jana Kramers, the Jesse James Deckers of the world, and you guys aren't going to like this. But Sean Johnson as well is looped into that. Yeah, Miss Gold Medalist. I'm sorry, she bad vibes, you guys. Bad vibes. We're talking mega energy, mega energy. And um, I do have to laugh. Like Jesse James Decker has blocked me from viewing her Instagram stories, but she hasn't blocked me from her um, like posts, which I just find fascinating. Um, also, Anthony Bass has been in the news. Um, he was in the news a few months ago at this point, maybe, maybe two months ago. Um, he had posted a picture of Sydney, who is his wife really pregnant on a flight. She's by herself. She's like traveling with her two, their two daughters who are toddlers. And I guess like the flight attendant gave drop, pop, like gave them popcorn and the girls like obviously made a mess because they're toddlers. And then the flight attendant made her get in the aisle and like pick it up and was like humiliating her in front of all these people. And Sydney's obviously like, well, don't you guys like clean up after like the flight? And everybody was like really enraged by this and was like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe that they made her or uh, people were like, I can't believe she's upset. She has to clean up her own popcorn. And I actually was kind of on the fence about that. But like, given the fact that he's the one that tweeted it and he's like a nasty homophobic fuck, um, I hate him. Hate him. And I hope he's jobless. So I don't really know like what that family is doing. You know, I do want to do a deep dive um, because, like I said, people keep asking for it. Um, I call them the Nash villains because they just give horrible vibes, horrible energy, very hateful. I remember Jesse James Decker performed at a, a like tree lighting ceremony or something. And like Melania Trump was there. They like posted about like Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, but they never posted anything about Black Lives Matter. Like they're wildly horrific people. And I just find them to be repulsive and just embarrassing and nasty nasty anyway okay you guys that's all i have for this week i love ending it on that type of a rant you know it's that it's what i do i will be back later this week um and i will be talking orange county and other updates hopefully you know kyle mauricio hopefully something comes something happens within the next few days um i will be keeping everyone abreast of the situation so please rate review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and i'll see you guys later this week bye Thank you.